Hello, welcome back to a new video. So I've been playing the brand new Space Marine 2 game for quite a while now since it came out and there's a few things about the game that I really find irritating and annoying that we're going to be talking about in today's video. So at first I want to say that the campaign mode is garbage compared to this mode which is basically the PV E mode where you play online with a team of people and then you do these six missions now there's only from what I can see there only seems to be six missions so if you go to this terminal you see you have different game modes you've got the campaign mode the eternal war mode which is basically pvp and your operations which is like the team based co-op online part of the game which is the best part of the game the campaign mode is a complete waste of time because it's like a watered down rubbish version of the operations mode so you got the story but you don't have leveling up you don't have a skill tree you don't have classes you don't have all the great stuff that's in operations and obviously you have to play it alone unless you've got friends that you can add to it so i didn't even finish the campaign i got halfway through i think maybe I finished this Kadaku planet, which for some reason only has two operations, which is very short, and Avarax, which has, I think, only two as well. But I really like the operations in Kadaku where you fight the Tyranids alongside the Imperial Guard. The next planet is kind of rubbish because you're basically fighting against the Chaos Marines and there's not really much Imperial Guard presence. I think there's still a few Tyranid missions, like uh, this one, I think, is a Tyranid. Tyranid mission. Yeah, Tyranid Swarm. So the only two enemies in the game so far are the Tyranids and the Chaos Marines. I don't like fighting the Chaos Marines because it's just boring because when you kill them, no blood comes out. They don't have fleshy bodies. They're like these phantom ghouls in inside or encased the armor. So when you kill them or decapitate them, all that comes out is like this purple dust, which looks really lame. I want to be destroying things and ripping things apart and I want to see gore and blood flying everywhere. That's the whole point of Warhammer. So when you fight against Tyranids, you get that. You get all the blood and the carnage and it's way cooler fighting against Tyranids. So unfortunately, that makes it mean that half the game is boring because half the game is the space chaos marines and the other half is like Tyranids. So I don't like any of the missions where you fight the Chaos Marines. I only like doing the very few missions where you go against Tyranids. So number one, that's against Tyranids. Number two, Hive Tyrants. Number three, uh, Heretical Influence. I think that's Chaos. This one seems to be also Chaos. And this one, I haven't unlocked it yet. And then this one, yeah, Hive City. So you got like three missions out of the six. And it's kind of pathetic. You only get six missions and half of them are rubbish. So that means I'm only forced to play three of them. One, two and six, which is Tyranid enemies. And I avoid these Chaos ones because I don't want to fight Chaos. So once you're done with the campaign, you won't really be bothered with the campaign anymore. And this is the main meat of the game. The online leveling up bit where you've got your own character, not that stupid Titus guy. And you can customize your own armor. Look, I customized this. You can choose the colors, the emblems, the design of the pauldrons, stuff like that. You put little things on it, like accessories hanging off it once you level up. And you got six different classes. Now, this is the main meat of the game. And you can do cool stuff like you can teleport to the armoring hall. And then you got to wait for this stupid thing to hover down. I don't understand why it's just not there all the time. What does it go up and then have to come back down when you approach it? So this is where you access things like your classes. You've got six classes. You've got the heavy, the sniper, the tank class. You got For some reason, there's two melee classes. So you've got the vanguard, which is like a melee class. It does grapple launcher. And you've also also the assault class, which is also a melee class. The difference is you've got a jump pack and you can boost around and then you've got tactical which is like the ranged class i guess with uh most of the ranged weapons are available as you can see you've got seven ranged weapons available to the tactical class whereas this one doesn't even have a main weapon this one can only choose between these three the bulwark doesn't have a main one the sniper you can only choose between a couple rifles and the heavy uh you get three heavy bolter, heavy plasma, and heavy melter. So I want to talk about the variety of weapons, which are not very impressive, to be honest. You would think in a game that's all about war, they would have like a massive selection of weapons where there's so much variety and different cool things. But no, there's barely anything to choose from. So there's only four melee weapons, either the chain sword or the combat knife, which is rubbish, or the power, the thunder hammer, or 
the power fist. So you've only got four choices. Now, the power fist sucks. The thunder hammer is pretty good, but it's kind of slow. Most people would be using the chainsword, which is really the only viable melee weapon because it's not too fast, it's not too slow, does good damage, got good combos. The combat knife is rubbish, like I said before. And then the secondary weapons... You've only got two choices. You got a bolt pistol, which is rubbish, and you got the plasma pistol. No, the heavy bolt pistol. Wait, you got the bolt pistol and the heavy bolt pistol. Heavy bolt pistol is basically the same as the bolt pistol, but it does double the damage. But it's got like I don't even know how it's worse. It's got a slower rate of fire. But why would you choose the bolt pistol over the heavy bolt pistol when it does more damage? I don't understand that. And you got the plasma pistol. Where is it? Yeah, the plasma pistol is the best pistol. So there's only three secondary weapons when, and this one's the best one by far, hands down. So if you can get the plasma pistol, don't even bother with the bolt pistols. So this guy can only choose the bolt pistol. Assault can choose heavy or the normal bolt pistol. Vanguard can only choose the bolt pistol. So most of the classes, you can only have one choice of a secondary weapon, which is kind of rubbish. Heavy, you get plasma, pistol. So let's talk about the primary weapons. So for example, the tactical class, you got the auto bolt rifle, the bolt rifle, the heavy bolt rifle, the stalker bolt rifle, the bolt carbine. So you got all these different versions of bolter rifles, which all basically do the same thing, but have slower or faster rate of fire. That's basically the only difference in the different variation of bolter weapons. So you got this one, you got the instigator bolt carbine, the oculus bolt carbine. Basically, they're the same. They're just scoped bolters that do burst fire. So one of them does like burst shots and one of them single fire. And bulwark doesn't have one. You got a bunch of sniper rifles, uh, bolt rifle. They really like the bolter stuff. But the bolter weapon sucks. It's like the worst primary weapon out of all the primary weapons. The bolter rifles and machine guns are they're all rubbish compared to either the plasma incinerator or the melter rifle so you might be thinking wow look at all these weapons we can choose from oh, all these different bolter rifles they, they all suck though this one is like an smg this one's just a normal scoped rifle this one is like a heavy machine gun it's just got bigger magazine capacity but the damage is rubbish it takes like a whole clip to defeat an elite enemy and yeah it can thin out swarms of light armored enemies pretty easily just a couple shots that's what it's what i guess but you go up against tough enemies it's useless it's rubbish and this one's rubbish this one's pretty rubbish as well why are there so many variations of the same gun that barely do anything different we don't need like 50 bazillion versions of a bolt gun so the only good primary weapon is the melter rifle and when you play online you see that everyone is spamming the melter rifle because it does insane damage look it does eight damage versus like three or two which is rubbish it's basically like a shotgun flame shotgun that shoots out a fireball in close proximity and it just one or two shot destroys swarms of enemies and you can like spam it five or six shots and you take down an elite enemy finish him off with a few chainsaws and it's down. So the melter rifle is basically the only viable primary weapon. The plasma incinerator is like a close second, but all these bolter variations are absolute garbage. And the heavy class has a multi melter. You might think, well, it must be double as good as a normal melter, but it's basically the same. It's got the same damage, you got the same magazine capacity. I don't really know how it's different to the normal melter. You got the heavy plasma and the heavy bolter, which is basically just like all the other bolters, but it's got a bigger magazine capacity. So it's basically the same damage, but you just don't have to reload it because you're the heavy class. The heavy class never has to reload, which is, I guess, the only good thing about it. It just boggles the mind how they could have had all these different weapons. I mean, look at Helldivers 2, for example. That's got loads of different weapon choices and different kind of stuff like lightning guns, flame guns, shotguns, machine guns, LMGs. And then Warhammer 40k, oh, you barely got any choice when it comes to weapons. Where are the shotguns? Why is there not a single shotgun? Look, and no shotguns. No shotguns at all. Why is there only five choices of melee weapons? You've got the power sword, power fist, chain sword, a dagger, and the hammer. I feel like they could have added loads of different other types of weapons, like a pole arm, a halberd, like a chainsaw spear. I don't know, something a bit more interesting. And you just get stuck either using chainsaw or the sword if you have it available. 
So I find the selection of weapons be really boring. So this is my main character, I've got a level 10 Vanguard and I'm basically forced to use these weapons because you only get to choose three weapons and the Melter rifle is way better than these stupid scoped carbines. And also I've only got one choice of pistol, which is this one. You only get one choice, the hell? Why can't I take a plasma pistol? And then for my melee weapon, I've got either the combat knife or the chainsword. Obviously, I'm going to use the chainsword. But why can't I use the power sword or the thunder hammer as a vanguard, which is supposed to be a melee character because you've got a grapnel launcher, which launches you towards the enemy, which implies that you're going to be in melee combat most of the time, doesn't it? But yeah, I'm forced to use these same weapons every single time because you don't really get much of a choice. Also, it would be nice if they gave you different pieces of armor that actually do stuff like add stats or special abilities so far it's only cosmetic so you got all this customization ability to change things like yeah you can change you can unlock these as you level up and they look cooler but they don't do anything differently so if you go to Astartes chapter you can make your own custom armor set and you can change the color scheme like I can make this green wait I don't know it's not it's not actually changing anything. Oh, that's just the emblem, I think. Oh, that's for the chest. Wait. So, for example, I can change, change the color of the helmet to yellow. Got to unlock these. Green, black. So, yeah, you can customize your own space marine. Kind of like the tabletop game where you paint your miniature. So, it's a bit like painting your miniature in the way that you want it to look. So, that's kind of nice, but it's only cosmetic. There's no, like, armor that add stats that you can unlock or buy. Why can't there be a shop? Like a shop where you purchase new armor, new weapons, actually add bonuses to your character. That would be nice. And the other problem I have is with resolution. So I recently bought this brand new monitor. It's an ultra wide monitor. Its aspect ratio is 21 by nine. And obviously Space Marines 2 doesn't support ultra wide, ultra wide aspect ratio yet. I think they're planning to implement it, but it's only got 16 by nine aspect ratio. So I'm playing it on my ultra wide monitor. It doesn't look, you can't really see it in the video, I guess, because I don't know. But to me, everything is kind of stretched and my Space Marine looks really fat and wide, but I don't really have a choice because there's no support for it. And if I go to standard 16 by nine ratio, it gets all staggery and laggery. So if you go to settings, go to video, you can change the display resolution. So for some reason, when I select certain resolutions, it makes my game really laggy and the FPS drops down to like five FPS and I have to get it back onto one of the resolutions where it doesn't lag. So I usually have a 1920 by 1080 and that's usually fine, but sometimes even then it lags and the only way to fix the FPS lag is by changing the resolution to that and then changing it back to 1080p. I fiddled with the graphic settings, I put it to low, didn't make any difference. I fiddled with the upscaling, didn't make any difference. The only thing that seems to fix the problem when you get FPS tanking is by changing the resolution and then changing it back. So if I change the resolution to 3440 by 1440, which is the native resolution of this monitor, it will go into standard aspects ratio of 16 by nine. But then for some reason, I get really low FPS, like five FPS for some reason. And then I have to put it back down to something lower, like 1920, if you go down to 1600s, the sharpness of the game looks really rubbish, so I wouldn't go below 1080p, I mean 1920. Uh, I can go into the 2000s, and it's basically the same, it just makes it a bit slower. Maybe my system can't handle it, it's just really annoying, because sometimes it randomly tanks the FPS. So I've got 60 FPS right now, and it's buttery smooth. But then sometimes, for no reason, it will just drop down to a 5 FPS, and then I've got to fiddle with the settings and it takes ages because even the settings menu is really laggy at 5 FPS and I've got to like click it and then 10 seconds later it actually changes the resolution settings. So that's kind of annoying. So yeah, in general it's just kind of annoying. Certain things about the game are good, like the gameplay is quite fun and it is quite addictive and leveling up your character is quite fun and getting new perks. Oh, I quite like the talent tree, the perk system, so you got this. So you can actually upgrade the weapons. You've got standard master crafted artificer and then relic. And then you've got like different options. You can select perks for the weapon. So for example, you could either have better cleaving potential, but lower strength or better strength, but lower cleaving potential. Or for example, the melter rifle, 
if you get it to master crafted you can choose either more damage and firepower and more magazine capacity um, or you can choose more range but less magazine so you do have some kind of decision making based on what kind of playstyle and then this one has uh, more range more magazine capacity so it's basically the same as that but upgraded and then relic we can choose more damage more capacity more firepower yeah so you've got some choices and then you've got perk trees for the weapon as well so you can choose different modifiers for the weapons like 10 percent damage against terminus enemies yeah it's quite nice you've got this very simple perk tree and then for your classes you got this very linear skill tree you don't really have like the ability to choose a playstyle, choose a build because you basically just get everything as you level up so this you get level two level three level four and then as you level each level you just choose the new one they might as well just be automatic because there's no choice or decision making so like oh should i put my points here or should i put my points there like in diablo no you just get everything as you level up so it's a bit boring i mean it's nice to level up and you get new perks and you become stronger but it'd be nice if they gave you like a big tree and you can specialize into things and unlock different abilities depending on which path you choose in the skill tree but so a very dumbed down linear perk tree but i guess it's better than nothing yeah so i think it'll be easy to fix these problems they just need to add more weapons maybe less variations of bolter rifles because i'm so bored of the bolter gun it's an okay weapon but it's not really that fun to use i just wish there's more variety you know more weapons and stuff i feel like i'm just pigeonholed into being forced to use the same weapons because there's only a few weapons that are really good and the rest are just kind of meh and I feel like the gameplay does get very repetitive. You're basically just doing the same thing over and over again. At least in Helldivers 2, you've got all the different stratagems. You've got different types of bombs and strikes and stuff like that. You've got turrets which you can deploy. And you've got way more weapons. But I guess there's no melee in Helldivers 2, but there is melee in this. I keep comparing it to Helldivers 2 because this game is a lot like Helldivers 2. Because it's squad-based. You're up against hordes of enemies. And the enemies... Are kind of like insects kind of like in helldivers it just feels like this is like helldivers 2 but without stratagems orbital strikes turrets but you do get melee so yeah take that for what it is <laughs>